Welcome to America Reads Fun Learning Activities. We are college students who create fun learning activities for kids. Our fun activities are focused on reading, writing, and math. Thank you for joining us to learn today. My name is Zoe, and in today's activity, we'll be learning about breaking down an author's argument. Before we jump into the lesson, we should define what a claim, evidence, and reasoning are, as they are a part of an argument. A claim can be defined as the main argument or point the author is trying to make in the writing. Evidence can be defined as facts, quotes from sources, or data that help back up a claim. Reasoning explains how or why the evidence supports the claim. Here is an example of an argumentative text. You can pause the video to read if you would like. Nowadays, students of middle school no longer have the choice to have a snack time during the school day. Snack time should still be enforced in a part of the school day because it will allow a student to take a break to recharge and resume class ready to learn. A 2016 study revealed that students who snack on healthy foods tend to perform better in school. Snack time for middle schoolers could increase our grades and this is a part of why it should be put into effect. So when we're analyzing an argument, you might want to ask yourself a few questions. What do you think the author's claim was? What do you think the pieces of evidence were? And what do you think their reasoning was? You can go ahead and pause the video in order to determine what this author's claim, evidence, and reasoning were. Now I will reveal what the author's claim, evidence, and reasoning were. The author's claim was that snack time should still be enforced and a part of the school day because it allows students a break to recharge and resume class ready to learn. Here, the author is stating their position on snack time. They're saying that snack time should be enforced because it will allow students a break to recharge and come back to class ready to learn. This is their opinion and this is what they will be talking about in their argument. The author's evidence was a recent 2016 study revealing that students who snack on healthy foods tend to perform better in school. Here, the author is providing data to support their claim. The author's reasoning was that if students have snack time, their grades in school will become better, and thus, middle schoolers should have snack time in their school day too. Here, the author is providing a little bit of reasoning as to why they believe that snack time should be enforced for middle schoolers. What do you think of the argument? A couple questions you might want to ask yourself when you're reading an argument is, did the author convince me? Do they have a good claim that I understood? Did they need more evidence or reasoning in their argument? Or did their evidence and reasoning make sense to me? This will help you determine if their argument was good and convincing or not. So now we will determine soundness, relevancy, and sufficiency of evidence and reasoning. But before we do so, I'm going to define what these words mean. Soundness is a valid argument that comes from a true thing, fact, or widely known belief. Relevancy is the importance of an argument that is being written or spoken about. Sufficiency is an acceptable amount of evidence and reasoning in order to support the author's claim. In relevancy, this could be an argument that is relevant to you as a seventh grader or in the day and age of 2021. Sufficiency can be two things. It can be a lack of evidence and reasoning or if there's too much reasoning and evidence, um, it's for you to decide for yourself. So here's an example. Imagine somebody comes up to you and makes this argument. If you like action movies, you will enjoy all the Star Wars movies too. Is this sound? Is it sufficient in evidence and reasoning? Is it relevant to you? You get to decide. Soundness. Does it make any sense that if anyone likes action movies, they will also enjoy Star Wars? 
You may want to consider that just because someone likes something, it does not mean that they like everything related to it. When you're reading an argument, you might want to consider if the, if the author comes to conclusions or assumptions about the reader or not. Relevancy. Is this argument relevant to you as a seventh grader in this day and age? Is there any evidence or reasoning to show that it's relevant? The author did not provide any evidence or reasoning to say that if you like action movies, that you will also like all the Star Wars movies. Sufficiency. Is there an acceptable amount of evidence and reasoning that the author uses to back up their claim that you will like all Star Wars movies? Sometimes, in an argument such as this one, there might not be enough evidence or reasoning. Considering soundness, relevancy, and sufficiency when you're reading an argument, you may decide whether this argument is convincing or not convincing, if it's good or if it's bad, depending on what it lacks and what it has too much of or just enough. That concludes our lesson. Thank you for learning with me today. I hope you come back and learn some more. Please comment if you have any questions, like and subscribe to our channel, and we will be back with more videos.